casing paint. I tried casing paint on my latest piece uh, that I was working on with Thor battling the fire giant um, and it didn't really work as I had expected. Um, these are casing paints and I had hoped that um, it would work a little bit more like, I mean they said it wasn't opaque paint. Um, I don't know what I was expecting exactly, but I hoped that it would work a little bit more like an oil paint or an acrylic paint. Um, more like an acrylic paint is kind of what I thought. Um, but the properties of the paint are really kind of interesting. Um, right now I sort of, you know, I still really want to love them. I want to give them a try, but, um, for my painting style, it's, um, and what I was going for with that type of work, it just really wasn't working out. So I want to give an example of kind of what I was talking about in my little blog post. That way you guys will be able to follow along and understand. When I got them, they came with like a kit that said, you know, you could use them on watercolor paper. I guess they're supposed to be very versatile. Um, supposedly you can use them on watercolor paper and uh, people have used them as for um, underpainting in oils um, for years, but on hardboard surfaces like masonite, um, which is masonite is basically like a part, type of particle board um, that's put together with glues and binders. You could probably use them on a uh, plywood panel. Um, anything that's hard and doesn't have a lot of flex to them because apparently these guys um, if implied if applied thickly they'll crack or flake off um, they seem to be very porous and have like a lot of um, tooth to them which would in my mind make them very suitable to uh, use as underpainting or um, that sort of thing for I mean, I'm even thinking that maybe I'll use these eventually like under a pastel or colored pencil artwork thing. So initially I was thinking, oh, these are really cool. I like the matte uh, velvety texture of them, but uh, my uh, hopes were kind of dashed because as you can see, like they kind of come out. Some people say they have like a smell to them. They look very much like an acrylic paint almost when they come out, kind of buttery. Um, and you know, they, they kind of have an interesting consistency. I feel like they, my biggest issue with them is I feel like they don't flow like uh, an acrylic or an oil paint would. I'm totally a newbie here, so for me, that's just going to take me some time to get used to the medium um, itself. And of course, I'm impulsive and I just dove right in to painting on them on my painting. Um, and like I said, the first few layers were okay, but I'm an artist that likes to layer a lot, so I wouldn't definitely not recommend these uh, for people who want to layer their paint a lot and stuff as they're going. So the first thing uh, that I've kind of noticed is that, you can kind of see here, they really dissolve pretty well in water. And to me, these paints act like a watercolor. I don't think they're anything really like an acrylic or an oil painting. And certainly they don't have, just from my limited uh, playing around with them. They don't seem to have the buildability that acrylics or oils have. So you can go back in after you've put stuff down and like blend it with water. The other issue that I have with these, uh, I mean, and that's, a, it's a perk that you can go back and blend it with water after the fact. Um, but these, because these paints are kind of, um, because of the like viscosity of these paints, they're kind of, I would say, kind of dry. They go on really 
like almost have a dry brush effect. Let me give an example of that really quickly here. Of course, that had a little water in there. So if I sketch out a line here, you can see, and I, this is a pretty textured watercolor paper that was included with them, um, with the kit that I bought. They go down and they're really um, out of the tube, straight out of the tube, they're really kind of thick and dry. They feel kind of buttery like an oil would, but they almost have a softness to them. They're not, um, it's really hard for me to explain, but they're not like as stiff. And part of that is, you know, probably that brush, but I've tried various brushes with them. Um, this brush is a oil and acrylic brush, just a cheap one, but I like them a lot for my oils because they're very springy and they don't have a lot of uh, bristles. And I'm not a person that likes a lot of brush texture, unless it's where I want it to be to create an accidental texture. So here you can see, I can get a pretty nice thin line with them but there's kind of a lot of drag. And what I notice about them is compared to like an acrylic paint, acrylics seem when they're watered down a little bit more, or like I like to use the flow acrylics and oils too, the paint doesn't stay as much in the bristles of the brush. And I kind of feel like I have to push more. Um, and this kind of accidental texturing here would be useful for I don't know, texturing a rocks or dirt or ground or something. Um, but when you're trying to like render out blended skin tones or something, can be I found it to be kind of frustrating. Um, so what I would suggest and how I'm going to experiment with these moving forward is to use them more like a watercolor paint um, because to me I really strongly feel like these are like watercolor paints. I can put these down if I do like want to do a circle rinse my brush over here and then you know go in and like blend them out like a watercolor effect and you're going to be painting really thinly with them that way I mean like if I want to create a gradient or a blend here in the middle of this this circle I can do that just like I would with a watercolor, but the benefit is, I guess, that these are more opaque, like a gouache or something would be. Um, to me though, they differ a little bit from gouache because I still feel like gouache has a little more fluidity to it when you're laying it down, you know, laying down the colors. So here, I, it, it really works well to like leave my white there and paint like I would like a watercolor painting. And I think the same is true. Like it's like I mentioned, it's it's a feature of the paint to be able to put this down and then you know, put another color next to it. And then you can actually like let those two colors dry and theoretically blend them together using a little water or medium or whatever maybe um, and get a more opaque color. But this is a totally like, seems a bit more opposite to me than how I work, like if I work oil painting. Um, 
I mean, I guess you could work kind of like an a la prima oil with these, but I tend to work with a lot of layers with my oils. Um, I use dryers and stuff, and same thing with my acrylics. So I put like a thousand layers on there um, and a lot of glazes um, and a lot of changes and refining go into it. So the other issue, I mean, the main issue I have is kind of like the spreadability of them. Um, whereas, you know, this sort of thing where the brush creates a lot of dry brush trail off. To give an example, if I just use like a tiny bit of acrylic over here, these are my fluid acrylics. Just, just as a comparison. And I dipped these into my fluid acrylics. Now granted, it might be, I might have a little more of this trail off if I'm using regular acrylics, but the paint goes and goes a lot further before I get that trail, that draggy trail off, even if I kind of dry my brush over here and I dip directly into this paint over here. I'm still getting some of that, but it's like I get more because of the fluidity of the fluid acrylics. I'm getting more paint payoff. Um, this is the acrylic here. And the darks are a lot darker, which I really appreciate. The darks for the casein paints take a lot of getting used to um, because they're, they're a lot lighter. So you can't, it's hard to get the same value range in my opinion. I was to say try this other burnt umber kind of color. And don't get me wrong, they were out of the burnt umber in the casing paints, so I had to compare this is raw umber casing with burnt umber acrylics, but it's still, the casing dries a lot lighter, which is, it, it takes some getting used to tonally, because uh, it goes down pretty dark and then dries lighter. Um, Whereas acrylics and um, they seem to dry darker on average. So, like this is a, out of the tube acrylic for comparison here. It's still going, try that one more time. But I don't, it still went a little bit further before having the trailing than, than the casing. But I don't really use, like just usually use straight out of the tube acrylic. I use acrylic with, you know, some water blended in. Um, but that's part of the reason I also have switched to the fluid acrylics because it's just a lot stickier to the substrate and seems to stick better. Now maybe I'm just, I know I'm just very inexperienced with these casein paints and I may grow to love them. There are things that I really do like about them. I really do like, kind of like the matte finish that they have. Um, and again, this is kind of a neat feature that I can go in after this is dry and kind of blend it. But see the thing about it is when I do that, like if I was to blend that in acrylics or oils, it almost has a creamier, especially in oils, it has a creamier uh, blend to it. This blend is more streaky and striated and it's more like a uh, watercolor blend. So I really feel like you need to treat these more like watercolor. So I may try another painting in the future 
where, or start something, where I treat it more like a watercolor. And you can kind of, you know, dry brush it out. But again, that's not like a really smooth gradient, you know. I really kind of feel like I have to work it and then it kind of, it dissolves it, but it leaves like this um, whitish puddle kind of area if you put too much water in it to like blend it. Um, so the other thing that they had for the casing paints was this medium, uh, this casing emulsion. And uh, I, I don't know, that stuff's supposed to be like, you can glaze with it. And so I did try some experiments kind of with it. You know, I probably should have tried all of this stuff before diving into a painting, but I was just being like, oh, how hard can it be? And I'll, I'll just try a new medium, you know? So yeah, this is supposed to be, this medium is supposed to be, allow me to like glaze and stuff. And I'm gonna put some, some white over here. So again, like the white goes over pretty nice and opaquely. I could see myself using maybe the white with like some watercolor or something, maybe in place of gouache or I'd like to see how the whites compare. I often like to use it with like a mixed media, but I'm not much of a watercolorist anyway. So that's the white over it. And again, it dries so quick that, you know, you can't really apply the white and expect it to blend in like an oil paint. And some people would say, oh, with acrylics, you can't do that either. But I do it all the time with my acrylics using acrylic medium and stuff. And this stuff is really thick. Um, I had to like kind of figure out that I guess it's supposed to be really thick. I don't know. This is the glazing medium here. So... I guess it has to be thick so that it doesn't disturb the under layers. But like if you get too impatient with this stuff, it kind of starts to lift off and smear your, you know, what you got going on underneath. So yes, I can apply a transparent red glaze here. But I don't know, it just, when I was trying to work it before, I may have been using too much water or something. It just didn't seem, just does not have the same flow properties. Acrylics really seem to do, you know. It's a lot different. So, oh, and the other thing is, is that you can't really do any like impasto techniques with this or anything again because it, it might like flake off. Um, and I can go in here and like scrubby up this ball and put more white. But the, I feel like the trick of it is really like working super thin. Um, Maybe with the really dry brushes, I'm not doing more like dry brush techniques. I'm not really sure. I'm not ruling these things out completely, uh, but it's just seeming a bit challenging for me to figure out how to work with them. They are, I mean, I've kind of become more of an oil painter and they are just different. Again, my main issue is like the layering thing. So I just find that as I try to like paint stuff and layer the strokes, I also really don't like like, I have to use a lot of paint, <laughs> a lot more paint to create the desired, I mean, these are supposed to be opaque, but the desired opaqueness of my stroke. And then it gets streaky. I feel like, the control for me they're not as controllable I don't know as I'd like them to be so I don't know I'm gonna I'm gonna try 
to continue using them. Maybe do some sketches or other small paintings with them. I'll try them on different surfaces and see how I like them. Maybe they're better on a different type of substrate or something. I haven't totally ruled them out. I mean, I want to love them. There are things about the consistency that I really like about the paint. Um, and at first I was like, oh yeah, I think I really like these. But then the more I got into kind of painting it with the style that I'm used to painting in, it was like, I don't know that I really like these that much. Um, and again, I'm not a watercolorist, so I really feel like if you work on them like you would work on a watercolor painting, they're probably gonna work out pretty well for you if you're used to using watercolors. Um, but if you're trying to work with something like this um, and you want more of that uh, layering ability and stuff and build up and sealing kind of ability that acrylics or oil paints have where your surface actually kind of gets, you know, built up by all the layers. I would say stick with acrylics. I don't really know like the advantage that they have over acrylics is to me is just purely that they, you can go back and re-wet them and that can be a benefit um, if you're, you know, working like with a watercolor kind of style or um, that sort of thing. I mean, like this texture in here is kind of nice, but again, it's, it looks, that looks more like a watercolor. Like these to me are, are watercolor paints and, you know, you, you kind of just have to learn. I would say the quality of the paint themselves is all right. Other artists have noticed like, they say there's like a smell associated with them. I don't really notice that. Um, and they're supposed to be fairly non-toxic, but again, just different than what I was expecting. The other thing is too, um, for my patrons, I um, am probably just going to be starting my Thor painting over again. I was thinking I would go ahead and just continue in acrylics, but um, pretty much, I think this guy, he's gonna be, the, the paper, the support is kind of damaged from all my scrubbing with these paints, and I think that, um, I'm probably just going to have to continue in either oils or acrylics, because he's kind of a little warpy. And um, like here I started in with the acrylics. This was all like casing paint back here. But the thing about it is like, again, I, um, I was having lifting problems with the paint and blending problems with the paint. And I don't know, I mean, if I was work more in an impressionistic style, I guess, I probably would really love these case casein paints, but because I'm trying to get more of like a blend. It's just not working for me too well, unfortunately. Um, and if you see here, I started in on the arm. I actually started in going in with acrylics at the end, and that was kind of working with me for building up uh, more definition and getting the start of that. But I was just finding it really hard to control these guys um, so yeah, I'll probably give it another go on another painting, maybe something more simple, maybe just like some sort of sketchbooky type thing, um, or color study or study of something just to see, you know, if I can kind of get the hang of them. But for now, that was a big epic fail, so <laughs> on to starting over and the next one. Um, for this personal piece and I still again I haven't decided if I'm going to start over in acrylics 
or just bust out my oil paints and, and do it in oils, um, which may actually be the easiest uh, thing for me to do. We'll see. All right. Thanks again so much for all your support, and I hope that made a little bit of sense uh, to you guys. Talk to you later. So just playing around with these things here, like, I don't know. Zooming in and stuff like just playing around with these things here. Um, so I don't know. I almost want to say that I feel like these casein paints are really lend themselves. Not only are they to me more watercolor like just in how they look, but I want to say that they. Um, really lend themselves towards bigger application like with acrylics I can get pretty small itty bitty tiny minute detail but with these guys um, I just can't really get in there and get uh, the kind of detail that you know I want to get like I feel like I'm gonna be more successful with these things if I work um, a little bit larger scale really I mean I can get fine lines but it's almost like the fuzziness of the water blending capabilities create like a really diffuse um, look. I'm, I'm not really a, a watercolorist. I mean, I use it occasionally. I usually use it uh, mixed media because with watercolor, I have such a hard time um, controlling it. You know, it likes to control me, and uh, I don't really like that. So, and these things too, I mean, I just don't really feel like, I mean, if I'm going for more of an illustrative look, I feel like it's going to be, I mean, I'm sure people do. Realism with uh, casein paints, just as they do it with watercolor, and I'm always amazed. But for me, it's not the most uh, easy medium to use for that sort of thing. That's um, some chapped lips going on here. Kind of. I just, I don't know. Still really having mixed feelings about this casein paints. I mean, in some aspects, right, they're kind of good. I like this watercolor. kind of look to them. I mean, I really feel like these need to be like watercolored out. So it just lends itself more to that sort of style. I also feel like, for me personally, acrylics are 
much more forgiving. Um, I feel like this is kind of a little more like watercolor here. Like if I'm mess up, mm, I can't, I'm not really going to be able to paint over it in the same manner and work it as much. I tend, always tend to overwork everything anyway, but I'm not really going to be able to work it as much as I would, I could if it was oils, oil, and I'm just like painting out of my head right now facial features just I'm just seeing what what I should have done in the beginning experimenting with how this is gonna work definitely I'm already noticing that, yeah, if I um, have a bigger brush size or feature size, I'm not going to be doing no little teeny weeny piddly features like I was trying to do on that other painting, the term that was coming out disasterful. Um, it's just not going to, I'm not going to be a happy camper. So, it's hard to get the brush to perform and the stuff to perform like I want it to. Even like with these highlights, I mean, trying to, I mean the cool thing about it is you can blend them out like this. But again, I'm working more like into the paper like I would like a watercolor or something. Yeah, for more of like an illustrative kind of style. I mean, it almost looks like she has her eyes closed there. but I kind of want to I kind of want to make the eye open so sorry lady in my opinion Oh, I don't know. Taking these kind of plant paints to life drawing class because I don't want to haul around a bunch of stuff. I think they'd be... really nice for that. And I just don't feel like they're really that forgiving. I feel like it's really easy to mix mud with these things too. I don't know. My eye was getting a little mud, a little mud mixing going on there. 
don't know. I'm just going to have to play with these guys more and uh, see what we can do.